It's great to be welcoming Laura Mulcahy back on the exchange. Laura is a singer songwriter and she's just remarkable. This, I think, is the third time we've spoken, Laura, isn't it? I think it is, Shirley. Hello to everyone. I hope you're all having a nice day today. Uh, yeah, there. I, I I hope so. And I know that you're you're kind of you're taking a bit of a, a, a breather from your your busy schedule because you're going to be performing this evening. You might tell us a little bit more about that as as I time am, goes. Yeah, yeah. I'm performing uh, in Cork this evening in the Sexual Violence Centre. Great. They've um, opened the community hub there for people uh, to. They're running a series of shows there for people to come in and enjoy culture. And it is no small honour, really, to be honest, that I'm the first musician to be involved oh, wonderful. In to wonderful. start off this series. So, um, so it's wonderful. And actually, if you're in the Cork area tonight, uh, tickets are free because it has been fully funded by Safe Gigs. So you can come down. Oh, wonderful. And you can get your tickets on Eventbrite, can't you, for that? Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. it's at 8 o'clock. Uh, the doors will be open from 7.30 yeah. Fabulous. Cool. Now we are. We're, we're, I suppose we're having a catch up. We we reckoned before we came on air that it's about a year since we last spoke. We last yes. spoke about the legend of Lily Pond Lake, and before that, it was the ballad of Lucy Sands, wasn't it? Yeah. It, like it has been a, it has been yeah a while. Um, I this is the first. The Janet is the new song. Um, it, it it's the first new release I've put out in about six months. I, I put out an album kind of last September and so that went off on its merry way and all the rest. Yes. Uh, but this is, this is new work now for a new album that I'll be looking forward to releasing. I cannot tell you when because I have a lot going on but the songs are coming and they're being written and we're working on them and you know the lovely thing about it is we're playing them live. Oh, beautiful. You get to hear them live before we record them. This is how I work. I put everything out there. Yes. I don't care whether it's new or old or what it is. I, I want to play it for people. So. Oh, yeah, but you see, I, I suppose there's a certain excitement, isn't there, to the new material? Because it's new, it's fresh, it's, you know, you want... It's you, always, yeah. yeah, it's always something exciting. And uh, it's, uh, Janet is uh, a song about kind of nothing. Nothing at all, really. <laughs> yes. And, you know, you write about some things sometimes and other times you write nonsense. And, you know, so I like to write about everything and Janet is uh, a piece of, you know, kind of just a, a, a nonsense. But, I mean, there have been great nonsense poets down through the ages, like Lewis Carroll. Or, Edward Lear. You know, like yep. Milligan, Edward Lear, yep. all of them. So, so why not Laura Mulcahy as well to indulge people in a little bit of nothing, you know? Exactly. And I mean, you know, there's a, there's, a, there's a delight in nonsense. I must tell you that I used to teach Victorian children's literature and I did a whole module on nonsense. Yeah. I, I used to teach an entire module on nonsense. <laughs> so yeah, well, I'm I a mean, fan. Just, you see, there's so much to it, to the vocabulary of nonsense. Yeah. Uh, you know, you look at writers like Roald Dahl who made up their own words and, oh, look, it's just wonderful. And I do the same kind of thing myself. I love... Uh, uh, a kind of an iconoclastic, idiosyncratic way of expressing yourself. Yes. I just think it's so exciting. It's new territory every time. Absolutely, and there is, there is, as we say, there is a certain sense to nonsense. Like it, it, it doesn't, you know, it, it has to have a certain way of operating. You know, that it's, it's not oh, it's entirely not. devoid of of meaning. I mean, the people who wrote this uh, nonsense literature, Hilaire Belloc would would have been another one. Yes. They weren't writing for children. They were sitting in the room, in their writing room at their desk, roaring, laughing themselves at the kinds of stuff they were putting <laughs> down on a page. They were having great crack all together. <laughs> yeah, and I, you know what? There, there should be more of that kind of creativity. I think, like, I, I understand yeah. why we've all become very serious. And, you know, there is a reason for, for us being very serious. But sometimes you do have to drop, you have to drop the millstone and, and just have, have some fun as well, don't you? Oh, yeah. And I mean, avant-garde, people think it's, um, you know, a kind of uh, something that you can't understand or it's impenetrable and you're not able to understand it if you go and watch something that's avant-garde. But my whole idea of being an avant-garde artist is that just open your mind a tiny bit. 
you'll be amazed how much fun you will have looking at something that is so strange in front of you. You don't need to understand it. Yeah, you don't. You can be like Janet. You can you can understand your own shenanigans. Oh yeah, just let it all <laughs> wash over you and and embrace the the experience. I suppose Janet is probably an experience. It's it's a great piece. I, I, I when I Thank first you. heard it, the first thing I did when I first heard it was I, I went back to the start and listened a second time. I just said, okay, I, I, I need to go there again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to because she's she's short and she's sweet. Yes, but you see, everything happens in that two to three minutes. Oh uh, yeah, it's it's so, it, it's it's yeah. a lot. <laughs> It is, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's intense. Well, I, I, you know what point. I said? It's it's a lot, but not enough. As I say, the first thing that I did when I when I finished was was going back to the again, start. Again. Yes. Again, again. <laughs> yeah, it's like a roller coaster. So it's a it's a yeah. real kind of a contradictory thing because it's a lot, but it's not enough either. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's and if enough. you really start to take it apart, Shirley, I'll, I'll send your brain mad now. <laughs> <laughs> There's no verses and no choruses. <laughs> Oh no! It's it's it just it 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 is what it is. Yeah, there's no start, there's no middle, and there's no end. <laughs> no, and 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 as I say, it's 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 a lot, but not enough. Yeah. <laughs> so well, this is why we're here today. We're going to share it with the listeners, like, and and they can make their minds up, and they can decide whether they they yeah. know what's happening yeah. at all, either. And you'll get all these emails being saying, "This is the work of a mad woman." <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> What's happening? And the answer is yeah. we don't we don't know. No, but we don't, we don't need know. to know. We don't not need to know where Janet is coming from, and we do not need to know where she is going. This is uh, this is what I was adamant about when I wrote it. Yes. But you see, I think that uh, the reason I find it so interesting is because I, I think we spend far too much of our own time wondering where we're going rather than living in the moment and, you know, yeah. coping with what is going on right now. Like, uh, why should we worry about something that is in two weeks or two months or two years from now when oh, sure. we should yeah. be present in the moment that we have and work on that? Yeah, Janet is full of good advice, isn't she? She is. <laughs> I tell you, you could, you know, you need to kind of market this as as a sort of a a, a self help type of thing. <laughs> oh, she is. She's part of my lifestyle uh, brand. Be like Janet. Yeah, I mean, you know, if you don't know what you're doing, what would Janet do? <laughs> what would Janet do? <laughs> so there you go. Yeah, that's Janet. It's, um, I've, I've really enjoyed people's response to it. Uh, it has been highly entertaining hearing what people think of Janet. Yes. Because, yeah, there's not enough and she's also too much. Um, <laughs> yes. You can, you can yeah. use that as your next review tagline, Laura. Too yeah. much but not enough. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, yeah. <laughs> or, or alternatively, you could write, Shirley was confused by this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look. So, uh, yeah, that's it. Tonight is a very important show for me. Absolutely. So and and, and it's um, great that you're the first artist to perform there as well. It's, it's wonderful. Because oh, yeah. I'm, it's a huge honour because uh, for the past 40 years, it has been uh, such a place of healing for so many people. Yes. They're in the heart of the city. And I just think it is a, a more than auspicious occasion that they're opening their doors to bring culture and beauty in there and all that. Yeah. And dare I say it, they're opening their doors to bring Janet in there too. Yes, Janet will be there tomorrow. Tonight, <laughs> tonight, uh, Janet will be there for sure. So, so they're opening um, their doors to her too. And I'm also playing in Ennis on the 16th of August in the Copper Jug. So I kind of every month or whatever I have a show at the moment. Um, the Copper Jug is a cafe in Ennis. It's a lovely little, it's Beautiful. a lovely little cafe in the heart of the town so I'm playing there as well and it's a lovely size of a venue actually I'm familiar with the Copper Jug it's a lovely size of a venue isn't it oh it's gorgeous yeah Yeah. Yeah. it's a big shout out to Kathleen who's a a great woman she has the place there and she's wonderful she really is
And it's great when people open their 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 premises up to artists like that, and you know, to, to open themselves yeah. up to new experiences. And it's it's a lovely thing to do. Well, it really is, and particularly to artists who need to you know, charge, a cover charge on a door because, Mm -hmm. I mean, we can't live on nothing. Um, There's great talk at the moment about extending and expanding the basic income for the arts, which I'm all for as well. But, I mean, we wouldn't be in the position where we need that basic income if people were prepared to pay a cover charge to come in, even into a pub. Oh, but can't you live... You know, like even two or three euro. Um, It always used to be that way years ago. But that has gone. Then we also have streaming, which has ruined, you know, any kind of income you would get from, say, record sales, because people would buy records years ago. You had to to get to hear the music. Oh, absolutely, Um, yeah. So, so yeah, like people like Kathleen there at the Copper Joke are fantastic because they're okay with you charging for a ticket price. Yes, which, uh, but, but Laura, can't you live off the exposure? Oh, well, you can't. <laughs> you can't. So, too many artists have died of exposure. I know, but when I see that, when I see that on things, you know, that people yeah. are looking for somebody to play for free and it will be great yeah. exposure. I think, you know, can you pay your electricity bill with exposure? Can you eat exposure? Oh, I know. And like, I mean, look, at the Pope certainly doesn't give away pints for free, so why should the artist? No, it, really, it, it, yeah. like, and if we appreciate it and if we enjoy it, you know, it, it, we should not begrudge paying a cover charge to, to have the experience. We yeah, shouldn't. and look, unfortunately, it's the way it has kind of gone, that people expect to be able to walk in and there's entertainment, there's everything laid on um, by the by the public and, um, and the artist is the last person who gets paid, you know. And it is really an unfortunate situation. But then you do have people like Kathleen there who are like, well, yeah, yeah your grand charge your money, blah, 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 you're yeah. fine. So I'm, I'm lucky now. She's, she's fantastic. Yeah, we're fortunate that there are still venues out there who, who do yeah. understand, like, but hopefully yeah. that there, there will be more. And hopefully people will, you know, appreciate the arts in, in a meaningful way, as in, you know... Yeah, because, I mean, even this conversation we're having here right now, I hope the listeners just listen in and realise that, like, you know, we brought everyone through COVID. We provided so much entertainment for free online and everything. Give back. If you see a show that's going on or if you see whatever, don't be afraid to even tip an artist if you see them in a pub. Throw them a fiver, yeah. you know, or whatever, like. And, and you know, attend these things. If there's something going on locally and you say to yeah. yourself, what's that all about? I wonder what that's yeah. like. Pop in and and check it out. You know. The, yeah, I mean, look, as I always keep it in my head. Like, I mean, even Bob Dylan had to start as a local artist. There are great local artists out there. Support them. Absolutely, yeah. No, it is. It's it's fantastic, and and long long may it continue. You know, I'm I'm very fond of having singer songwriters on the program to talk about, I suppose, the process of the business as well yeah. as to talk about their songs themselves. You know, and to give people a sense of the reality of the work that goes on behind the scenes. You know, whether it is writing the song, recording it. You don't get to record these things for free. You you no, you know, you many independent artists have to do all of their own publicity because it costs to get somebody else to. Do and you know, and also if you get if you engage like a PR company or something, they ca- they may have connections, but you can't be sure that they will actually care about your work as much as you will care about your work. So their campaign mightn't be as good as even your own campaign. Exactly, if you're putting putting something out there because you care more about it. Well, you, you you care more about it because you own it, and you need to care yeah. about it because you're you're hoping to derive some form of 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 income and sustenance from it. Yeah, you know. So please sustain me. <laughs> uh, send me money for feeding the children. Yes. Um, thank you all. <laughs> and remember that that Janet is is not enough, but at the same time too much. She's also too much. So, and that is, the, that is the message yeah. we're giving people from today. Sustain artists. They they also need to live and uh, relish the, the, the strange and beautiful and, and wonderful thing that Janice is. Janice. Yes, definitely. Yeah.
It has been delightful to catch up, Laura, and hopefully we'll, we'll catch up again in the not-too-distant future. Oh, I will have some treats for you by the end of the year, some musical delicacies, for sure, Shirley. Ah, wonderful. And I, I hope that I can be as, as delighted and perplexed and confused and, and entranced as I have already been. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, thanks a million, Shirley. Fire.